Hello, my name is Alex Schadenberg. I'm the Executive Director of the Euthanasia Prevention Coalition. I want to make a few comments now on the Assisted Suicide Bill in New Mexico, HB 47. This is another extreme assisted suicide bill. Um, Deborah Armstrong, the Democrat who sponsored two previous assisted suicide bills, has sponsored this bill also. This is also known as what they call the, what she's calling the Elizabeth Whitefield End of Life Options Act. Armstrong in 2019, her assisted suicide bill, HB 90, was the most extreme assisted suicide bill that I'd ever seen in the US. Among other concerns, the bill allowed assisted suicide for psychiatric conditions. It was allowed it to be done by someone with an undefined terminal prognosis. It allowed it to be done by nurses and physician assistants and it allowed it to be approved via telehealth. That was the bill in 2019, HB90. Similar to HB90, HB47 expands who can approve and prescribe lethal drugs from physicians to healthcare providers. Now, why am I saying this? In all other jurisdictions in the US, assisted suicide must be done by physicians. In New Mexico, HB47 is suggesting it be done what they call by licensed physician assistants, osteopathic physicians, uh, nurses who are registered in advanced practice as well as physicians. So they're expanding the group of people who are capable of prescribing and, um, and approving of assisted suicide. Expanding this list not only increases the availability of assisted suicide providers, but it also enables lesser trained healthcare providers to approve and prescribe lethal assisted suicide drug cocktails. And what's important about this is that we're talking about controlled substances, lethal drugs. It before all specialists who can counsel a person when a healthcare provider questions the ability of a person to consent. Now this is important. This counseling issue only comes into play when, when, the, when the healthcare provider is concerned about the ability of the person to consent. So someone might be very depressed. They might have uh, early stage dementia or late stage dementia, depending on what the situation is. Anyway, councils include state licensed psychiatrists and psychologists, which is what other states allow. But uh, New, the New Mexico Bill 47 is suggesting it should also include master, master social workers, psychiatric nurse practitioners, and professional clinical mental health counselors. Unlike existing assisted suicide legislation, HB 73G waives the requirement that a person's condition be confirmed by a second healthcare provider if the requester is enrolled in a hospice program. So all other legislation in the US for assisted suicide requires two approvals. New Mexico says that there'd be two approvals unless the person requesting is enrolled in a hospice program. This is very concerning because some people who are enrolled in a hospice program are not yet necessarily dying, meaning they, they're concerned about their situation, so they have enrolled in the hospice program. Unlike existing assisted suicide legislation throughout the US, HB 47 does not require a 15 day waiting period, but only requires a 48 hour waiting period that can be waived if the healthcare provider believes that the person may be imminently dying. Now, what's important about this is that studies show that the will to live fluctuates. So actually the, uh, removing the normal 15 day waiting period and making it a 48 hour waiting period and then allowing that to be waived actually denies someone effective choice. Therefore, HB 47 technically allows the same day death. A person could request assisted suicide on a bad day and die the same day. HB 47 tramples on the conscience rights of healthcare providers. The bill states that healthcare providers who are unwilling to carry out a request for assisted suicide shall inform the individual and refer the individual to a healthcare provider who's able and willing to carry out the individual's request or to another individual or entity to assist the requesting individual in seeking medical aid and dying. This is a form of direct cooperation. This is requiring someone who opposes assisted suicide to have to do a referral for the purpose of assisted suicide. Assisted suicide bills are not what they appear to be. Many people support assisted suicide based on the fear of dying a bad death, but legalized assisted suicide does not alleviate that fear because sometimes it causes a bad death. The Medical Express reported on September 8th, 2020, 
A little known secret not publicized by advocates of aid in dying was that while most deaths were speedy, others were very slow. Some patients lingered for six or nine hours, a few more than three days. Assisted suicide deaths, was refer this is referring to. An article published by the Seattle Times on March 5th, 2017, describes the lethal drug experiments that are being done by assisted suicide doctors to find a cheaper killing alternative. So what they were doing is they were saying, the assisted suicide drugs are too expensive. We want to find a cheaper way to cause death. The first second alternative turned out to be too harsh. Burning patients' mouths and throats, causing them to scream in pain. I believe around 31 people died with that first alternative. The second drug mix used 67 times has led to deaths that stretched out hours in some patients and up to 31 hours in one case. Assisted suicide bills are not what they appear to be. HB 47 is an extreme assisted suicide bill. It allows lesser trained healthcare providers to approve and prescribe lethal assisted suicide drugs. It has a 48 hour reflection period rather than a 15 day but then allows it to be waived, allowing for a same day death. And the bill tramples on conscience rights for healthcare providers. Armstrong's 2019 assisted suicide bill, HB 90, was the most extreme assisted suicide bill that I had seen. The bill allowed assisted suicide for psychiatric conditions to be done to someone with an unidentified, undefined terminal prognosis, and it allowed approval via telemedicine. Armstrong wants a more extreme version of assisted suicide. And if HB 47 is passed, she will try and expand it in the next term. We've already seen what she wants from the last bill she had. You need to stop assisted suicide bill, House Bill 47, and protect New Mexico from assisted suicide. You need to contact your legislators. You need to tell them that HB 47 is an extreme assisted suicide bill, that we don't need assisted suicide, that in fact, some deaths by assisted suicide are not good deaths. In fact, there's been a fair amount of suffering. We need to talk about what assisted suicide actually is and how it's actually done. People don't understand. They talk about this in theory and they say, oh, I want a, you know, a, a painless death. I want a, a quick and painless death. And they don't understand that the drugs that are being used for assisted suicide don't always lead to a quick or painless death. We need to say no to this. We need to provide care for our people in New Mexico and not kill.